The hall was a big room, panelled in wood, with a small stage at one end between two sweeping flights of stairs. There were giant pink bean bags in the corners. This is actually not as fancy as I expected, said Cass. I thought there'd be, like, a throne or something. Then suddenly, Vanessa was up on the stage with a microphone in her hand. It wasn't an ordinary microphone, though, like the ones we use at gigs. It was bright pink and sparkly, and it wasn't attached to a lead in an amplifier. Hi, everyone, her voice boomed from the speakers on each side of the stage thing. Thank you so much for coming. It means so much to me. It means so much to me to be on telly, more like, muttered Cass. Like she cares whether any of us came or not. We're just here to yell and make the room look full. Shh, said Ellie. If we talk over it, she'll have another tantrum and do it again, and we'll be here all day. Good point, said Cass. At least we're indoors, said Emma, and warm, which is better than ten minutes ago. Then we all shut up, because Vanessa had obviously noticed that people were talking. She looked like she could be on the verge of another fit of rage, and none of us wanted that. I just want to say, she said, that you're all very welcome to my big birthday bash. And then we all did shriek, because when a million shiny pink balloons suddenly fell down on top of our heads. None of us had looked up at the ceiling when we came in, because we were so busy wondering about Vanessa and her mysterious new friends, so we hadn't noticed all the balloons up there. There is a lot of pink at this party already, said Cass, fighting her way through some balloons. And we haven't even got to the pony yet, I said. That pony had better turn up, said Cass, or I'm going to be very disappointed. Terrible cheesy music started to play, and all Vanessa's new friends started whooping and dancing around. I looked at Cass and Alice. This is going to be a very long day, said Alice. Oh, look, said Ellie, food and drinks. Waiters in pink uniforms were moving through the crowd, carrying trays. Some were filled with glasses, fizzy drinks, others with lots of delicious looking canapé things. We grabbed some Cokes and, yes, mini burgers, and watched the crowd. Some girls from our class were dancing, but most were just standing around wondering what to do. All the cameras were on Vanessa's new chums, though. They were laughing and throwing their hair around and high-fiving each other. They don't look real, said Alice. I mean, they're like characters from Laurel Canyon or something. They can't live in our neck of the woods, I said. I mean, we'd have noticed them by now. Yeah, because one of them would have hit us in the face with their ginormous shiny mane, said Cass. They're flicking their hair around so much they'll put someone's eye out. In fairness, said Emma, chomping on a mini burger. The food's pretty good. Emma was right. We sat in a corner in one of the giant pink bean bags and stuffed our faces and talked. It was quite fun for a while. You know, even though the music's pretty awful, I said, this isn't so bad. I mean, there's mini burgers and bean bags. A dancing goon, said Cass, pointing at the glossy gang who were pouting at the cameras. Speaking of goons, where's Vanessa? She was nowhere to be seen. Poor Caroline was dancing slightly awkwardly next to all the hair flickers, but there was no sign of her ruler. Then the music stopped. Oh, maybe the pony's coming, said Cass. There was a trumpeting sound and the two big doors at the end of the hall opened. Some more cameras were already directed in that direction. Loads of smoky dry ice floated out the doorway, lit by pink spotlights. I have to admit, I did hope the pony was about to appear. Then a booming voice cried, All hail Princess Vanessa! And suddenly Vanessa appeared in the doorway. She had changed into a long, flowing, sparkly dress, like something Alice's Barbie had when we were little. I never had a Barbie because my mother didn't believe in them. She thought Barbie was a bad role model for little girls. And after seeing Vanessa today, I have to admit for the first time that she might have had a point. As if the Barbie dress wasn't mad enough, Vanessa was also wearing a crown. Oh my God, said Cass. Are we expected to, I don't know, bow down and worship her now? I certainly hope not, I said. Well, I'm not doing it even if we are, said Alice. I'd rather die. I don't think you're going to have to choose between death and worshipping Vanessa, I said. Although, really, if Vanessa had her own way, I'm pretty sure she'd love to shoot anyone who didn't do whatever she wanted.